This system here is actually my mom's computer. I built this using most of the same parts that I used in my own system. The same case, uh, very similar motherboard, and uh, you know some other things. This is a Phenom 2 X3, which is a triple core processor. I forget what what speed it is, but there's a, like a GeForce GT240 card in there. But the problem I'm having is the stock heatsink is apparently getting clogged very easily by dust and it's getting way too hot so we're going to install this monster I also use one of these in my system and it's been working great so uh, should be simple enough task to put it on this one too even with the filters in the front uh, a lot of dust has been getting in here and clogging up the fins on that cooler. I'll get a closer look at it once I get it out of the case here. One great thing about this case is how easy it is to work on the motherboard. Since this cooler has its own back plate, <clears throat> I uh, just take the video card out, disconnect the top power cables and flip this tray down. Don't really have to disturb any of the other wires, the ones that are the most tedious to hook back up anyway. Got to remove the existing mounting plate, put the screws back in it, and then put it in the box that the motherboard came in for safekeeping. And then just lift the motherboard up a little bit, put the new plate on, then I can put the board back down and put the screws back in. And from there, putting the cooler the rest of the way on is pretty easy. Just for size comparison, here's the new cooler next to the stock one. And I think this here is a 70 millimeter fan. It's all aluminum, not really much to it. It didn't cool all that well. This thing is a monster. 120 millimeter. You can also add a second fan to the back side if you want. And it has what's, dire what's called uh, direct contact heat pipe cooling where the heat pipes themselves are actually touching the CPU. And they're, you know, they're machined flat with that aluminum block on there. And another plus is the fan is a four wire fan, so it has the electronic speed control that the newer motherboards support. And the old plate is off, I just got to get the new one put on. The cooler comes with this big bag of hardware and a tube of thermal grease. And the mounting plate is great, it's, it's all, you know, rotate and lock in place. There's no hardware to fiddle around with other than the standoffs that actually hold hold it in place so you, you basically ratchet so that it lines up with the holes in the motherboard and then screw the standoffs in from the top and then you're done you can mount your motherboard back down from there it's just attaching the cooler and it's really pretty easy it's one of the easiest uh, oversized coolers I've mounted so far I misspoke a little bit in that last uh, clip there it's uh, about 1.30 in the morning, I'm pretty tired. The This bracket here is actually what holds the heatsink down on top of the motherboard. And uh, you have a backing plate you put on for reinforcement. And then these standoffs, you know, this is, this is one half, this is the other half, to uh, sandwich it onto the motherboard. And then they give you a little socket to tighten them down even, so it's pretty neat. They give you pretty much everything extra set of fan brackets if you want to add your own fan these screws here are also for the extra fan <clears throat> and they give you like I said the thermal grease uh, really can't beat it for under forty dollars it's uh, it works fantastic it's really quiet and it's lightweight for how big it is too so let me get this thing mounted on here real quick here's what the standoffs look like when they're installed on the board there are plastic washers on the bottom of these to insulate them from the board in case there's traces running close. And uh, <clears throat> on the bottom side you can see the plate. And the plate is also insulated of course. And uh, what I like to do before I tighten these down is make sure that the standoffs are centered as best as possible in those white circles. That way I know it's going to be perfectly centered over the CPU when it's mounted. And the socket you use to tighten the plate 
nuts on the bottom of the plate it has a cutout in the top for a Phillips screwdriver so it's really handy and by the way they do have a uh, video right on the website that shows how to install this uh, makes it quite a bit easier than fumbling with the instructions if you're lazy I'm almost ready to mount the cooler on the chip now I got some grease on the chip and another thing I like to do on this particular cooler um, is put a coat of grease on the cooler first and fill in those little gaps that are between the sides of the copper tubes and the aluminum block uh, because you just you don't want a bunch of air gaps in there it won't cool very well normally if you have a perfectly flat heat sink and chip you need very little grease in fact too much grease can be a bad thing if you have a very flat surface because it'll just you know have diminishing returns it'll actually act as an insulator sometimes but on something like this you want to try and fill those gaps in kind of like you're putting spackle on, on uh, a seam in drywall in a way although not quite as sloppy but you know what I mean make that a smooth surface and uh, do the usual on the CPU and then go ahead and mount it the clamp is really neat because it ratchets into position and you uh, to get it in there you ratchet it into one position slide it through and then ratchet it back into the position to match up with the uh, mounts on the socket so it's pretty uh, pretty handy another bit of advice mounting any cooler like this since you have to work at sometimes tight angles and the screw being spring loaded will tend to move back and forth a little bit while you're pressing down trying to get the screw centered in that standoff make sure you have a really good screwdriver that fits the screw snugly because when you're moving the screw around and pressing down really hard there's a really good chance you're gonna slip off the screw head and end up stabbing your motherboard and have to use a lot of choice words uh, been there done that luckily haven't done it with this cooler yet but back in my uh, socket 7 days and uh, socket A systems I had years ago uh, a couple times I put a screwdriver through a motherboard and it was not cool so take it easy when when uh, putting the spring loaded screws in okay it's all mounted up and the fans put back on you can see just how big this thing is um, let's see I got a zip tie on the fan wire there keeping it all nice and neat and you can kind of see how that clamp works <coughs> if your RAM has heat sinks on it that stick up like these do you can move the fan up a little bit because you can snap it in pretty much any position height wise move it up just enough to clear the RAM and you're good to go alright back together and it's party time hopefully this thing will be a lot cooler and quieter too let's see helps if you turn the uh, power switch on once again it's about 2.30 in the morning and I'm dead tired Yeah, video card fan will slow down when the driver loads. She's alive. I think I'm going to play some Quake 3 on my mom's computer before I take it back upstairs. she goes man can't even hardly tell the things running now just the way I like it nice and quiet in fact I can hear my furnace in the other room more than I can hear this also a quick update on the E2160 system I got brave and pushed it to uh, 2.7 gigahertz and overclocked the RAM to 1000 
Uh, remember that the RAM is supposed to run at 800 and the CPU is supposed to run at 1.8 so it is a pretty hefty overclock considering and uh, it's been running perfectly stable so far it made a pass through Memtest 86 and uh, now I'm running the performance test 831.5 I'm going to have to compare that to my last one but I know it's higher Let's see, the, the CPU mark got a 1574. And like I said, if I remember, the, the stock speed benchmark would be like 1020 something. So that's like a 50% increase in performance right there. Pretty sweet. I'm really liking that, uh, that little Pentium dual core chip. I didn't realize they were so tolerant of overclocking I don't know uh, from what I hear it's because of the small amount of cache memory that's on the chip and the cache memory can run at a much higher speed than what you know what the chip was designed at so the chip is easy to overclock but yeah she's still running great I'm still waiting for my uh, video card to come back from Asus for the third time so I can put that back in my main computer and then the Radeon HD 3850 that's in the computer right now will get put in this machine to replace the GeForce 6600 GT so this will be a pretty nice machine for uh, anything I want to play on it